Before we start this video, I want to give a massive shout out to the patrons on the screen right now. You guys are truly awesome. And if anyone else wants to support me, I will leave the link in the video description. All right, so I had a pretty big video planned for you guys today, including like five different ROMs. I even filmed a lot of it, but there were a few problems I had. One, most ROMs to most people are exactly the same with some minor differences. And two, the Pocket Phone F1 is my current only phone, the only phone I have, and I really can't afford for it to be down in any kind of sense of the word, and I need it to be set up and running pretty much all the time. If I had another phone, maybe I'd go more in depth, but at this point in time, I really can't afford to. Anyway, what I did is I called up my friend Griffin, who's really good with software, and he helped me with this. So from both of us, hey guys, we are Ryan and Griff with Failtech, and today we're gonna show you probably the best ROM, or in my opinion, the best ROM for the Poco Phone F1. Installing the ROM was fairly easy once I'd learned how to do it. Again, thanks Griffin. I'm not gonna go into detail here as I'm really not a professional at this, but I'll give you some basic guidance. You're gonna need a computer, a USB cable, and the phone. Oh, and several zips and software pieces of the puzzle that I will link in the video description. The first process is unlocking the bootloader with this software tool on your PC. I will leave links to everything again in the description. Then you'll need to flash a recovery on the phone. I recommend TWRP due to its reliability and ubiquity. Next, you'll need to flash the developer version of MIUI to ensure that the preceding software flash goes smoothly. Now you can flash Pixel Experience ROM along with Magisk for root access. Here with other ROMs, you might install G apps to gain access to Google's suite of software, but we don't need that here because Pixel Experience has it built in. And now you've probably noticed which ROM I picked from the list. It's probably the least interesting, the most overdone, and perhaps the most boring of all the ROMs to most people, but it takes the phone to a whole new level in my opinion. And to start reviewing the experience, I first have to evaluate what MIUI did and why it was a bit of a problem for me. The first thing that is really satisfying and pleasing is the fact that the Pixel Experience ROM actually delivers notifications properly by default, and I don't have to go tinkering and going into other software just to mess around to see notifications that I should normally see on pretty much every other phone. Everything from having a working LED that works fully functionally, to having them on the lock screen, to having them on the pull down in notifications, it just works smoothly and it seems to really not cut into the battery life whatsoever. Next, and I'm not sure if this is a placebo, but it, the connection seems a lot better. And I don't mean just on Wi-Fi, also on cellular and Bluetooth. Again, this could be a placebo, but I'm using the same phone for the same things that I used the phone for before, so surely it would work just the same. But it seemingly holds onto connections better without drops. And whilst this ROM is based on the same Android 9.0 firmware that MIUI is, it feels a lot cleaner and less bloated, mainly due to the fact that you get the essentials, but also because I think psychologically, you get used to the Pixel phones being the cleanest. And so the closer you get to that aesthetic, the more you're likely to feel like you've got a Pixel, a bit like a, a Pixel experience. Now I'm sure most of you by now have gotten on to the fact that I'm using developer options to get the faux notch removal thing. And that's because it's so nice not having a notch. It makes the phone feel completely different and more like a Pixel. And that's not custom software exclusive, but since we're on Pixel Experience, I wanted to make it feel more authentic. Even if in darkness with high brightness, you see the ears lit up due to the use of an LCD over an OLED. But other than having Google's latest services integrated into the ROM, clearly it's a Pixel Experience ROM, there's one piece of software in particular that makes this ROM for me, and that is Google's HDR Plus camera app. And I know you can get it off of dodgy websites as an APK, but no, this isn't just a side-loaded APK, this is the whole thing. As many of you are geniuses and quick to tell me in the comment section, the Poco Phone F1 shares the same Sony IMX363 sensor that can be found in the Pixel 3 with some optical changes, including a lack of optical stabilization and slightly more closed down aperture. So surely combined with the software, we have like a pixel experience, right? It's got all the features of the proper app, including the night sight, lens blur, and portrait modes, and playground AR. The results from the app certainly give more dynamic range and less of that over sharpens look that Xiaomi's app features. It's a solid part of this ROM and probably one of the better selling points of the entire thing. You don't get heaps of customization, which is something you'd typically get from like Resurrection Remix or Lineage. That's not really here. This is basically just a pixel virtualized software, but I feel like we don't even need that. I personally don't care for modding my phone really at all. And the things that I do actually customize can be done in Nova Launcher with Zupa widgets. 
So when it comes down to it, I don't really need the ROM to be heavy in customization, and I guess that's from me coming from previous Nexus and Pixel devices. Stability is something that I depend on. This is my only device and something that I need for work, contacts, and all the rest, and the Pixel experience doesn't disappoint. There was some crashing early on, but it turned out it was just because I was pinning the phone 100%, constantly reflashing it with different ROMs before I stuck with this one. And ever since then, it's held connection with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile signals, no drops or hangs or crashes. If I had just a bit more time and another device to use, Maybe I'd kind of go for a more in-depth guide on this, but as it stands, I see the comments and I hear your feedback and you guys don't want to see more Pocophone stuff. So I'm probably going to try and end off the Pocophone experience here and hopefully we can get some more phones in in the near future. The whole experience was actually quite fun and you do get to learn a few things. When you first do it, it can be a bit nerve wracking, but once you get used to it, it's kind of easy because you can break it down into smaller steps and you can realize why you're installing G apps or why you're installing Magisk or why you're doing things in a certain order and it can make the experience kind of wholesome. It's like a learning experience and you're having fun and you're making your phone better at the same time. If you've got the time and you can afford to mess around with your own phone, I do recommend you go and install custom ROM for yourself because it's a great learning experience and I, I think it's probably one of the more fun things to do on a mobile. Of course, this isn't the only ROM and you can go and get many other ROMs that add completely different feature sets, but most of them are just customization features. Don't get me wrong, I do like having the choice for customization, but I just don't need it. I also wanna say that I'm gonna be sticking with the Pixel ROM launcher and not reverting back to Xiaomi's MIUI. And the main reason for that is that I just really like how pixels look and I really like how there's basically no bloat and it's all the Google essentials because I am very tied into the Google ecosystem if only in software, not in hardware. This phone has been absolutely transformed by this Pixel experience ROM for me because we've got great battery life, absolutely great cameras, a screen that's maybe subpar but we can get over it, incredible battery life, lots of expansion, lots of ports and lots of connectivity and I feel like it's a completely different phone with this software. I also want to give a massive shout out to my friend Griffin. I'm going to leave his Twitter and his YouTube channel on the screen now so you can go and check him out. He does kind of software stuff and I think he's kind of making some Linux uh, tutorials and guides, which is really cool. He's been a great friend and he's been helping me out and I'd like message him in the middle of the night and he'd be like, okay, I need to help you with this. So, I mean, more props. I, I, I wish I could pay him, but unfortunately money isn't a great thing at the moment as you can probably tell because there have basically been no phones on the channel. Anyway, enough of the Poco phone, let's move on to bigger and better things. And that's been about it from me, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like the video, please do like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. And tell me in the comments what you think about these kinds of videos to do with the custom software, because maybe I'll do some more in the future. If you're new around here, please do subscribe because it really does help me out. I'm also going to leave my social media links and Griffin's links in the video description so you can go and check him out and all of my social media, as well as the fact that we have still got a giveaway going on, so I'll link that down there as well. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your continued support. I am going to try and integrate some more with Patreon, but at the moment, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Anyway, thank you all for watching. My name's been Ryan Thomas for Failtech, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.